who will take our bombers through to smash the Axis. You, and you, and the guy sitting next to you, and you, and you, and you. Every man in gunnery school must want to be a gunner. Otherwise, he'll waste his time and ours. Every man must want to get into this fight, win it, and finish it. He must want the added rank and pay of an automatic sergeancy. At the end of only five quick weeks, he must want his badge of courage and skill, the gunner's wing which prove him a flying fighter. You'll be wondering exactly what you'll do in gunnery school. When you first report, you'll be assigned to a small group of men called a flight. After one big assembly of all of you, each instructor will collect his flight and call the roll. Jefferson. Here. Jones. Here. Lomano. Here. Pulaski. Here. The same instructor will stay with you throughout your training. He is the boss. He will take charge of every hour of your training. His job is not to pass you or eliminate you, but to teach you. To see that as far as possible, every man in the flight understands his job and becomes a first-class gunner. Your instructor will report on the progress of each hour spent by each man. A daily progress sheet will record his report on your work hour by hour. You will be wondering what the hours on this chart stand for. What you will be studying during the time to come. First, you will meet your closest friends, the 30 caliber machine gun, and the heavier, harder-hitting 50 caliber. You will have to be intimate friends with these guns so that you can call them by their first names. Bolt, barrel, cover plate, lever, slide, spring, pin, and stud. You will learn how to take the guns apart and how to put them together again. You will learn what each part does in succession when the gun is fired. You will learn what to feed small guns and big guns, and how to doctor them when their digestion goes bad. And after you know your guns, and what happens when the trigger is pulled, you will learn about the path of a bullet's flight. Now the instructor will show you that a bullet flies a curved path. And you will have to find out why, if you want to shoot straight. The problem of hitting a target with a bullet that drops and drifts will bring you to the question of sights. You'll make the acquaintance of ring and bead sights and reflective or optical sights. Your introduction to sights will bring you to problems of sighting at a moving target. A gunner uses his sight to figure how much faster or slower than himself an attacker is flying. The instructor will show you how to estimate the apparent speed of an enemy by how long he takes at a given range to fly across part of your sight. During these same beginning hours, you must get the feel of your finest aerial gun platform, the power-driven turret. For several nights, you will have a chance to get used to different kinds of turrets mounted on test stands. You will move the guns as if you were tracking an enemy fighter. The feel of the controls will become easy and natural. Later in the course, you will have to learn how these turrets are put together and how to install the guns. Turret manipulation 
brings you closer to fighting in the air. The bombers which carry these turrets fly at high altitudes, where the air is cold and thin. A medical officer will tell you what clothes and equipment keep you fit to fight high upstairs. Up with these bombers, in your turret, on constant alert over long hours, your fellow crew members depend on your being strong and fit. You will have the chance to prepare yourself for this, too, in gunnery school. By this time, you will be ready to start firing guns at moving targets. First, with a BB machine gun at an indoor range, you will begin to learn how to aim ahead of your target if you want to hit it. Then, outdoors on the skeet range, with 12-gauge shotguns, tracking and leading the target will become instinctive. Your first experience firing a machine gun will be on the malfunction range. Something will at once go wrong with your gun. And you will be expected to figure out what is wrong each time your gun jams or stops firing. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll find the answer. You'll spend a few evenings cleaning and adjusting the guns that other classes fired during the day until you know a machine gun better than its mother does. When you fire these guns at aircraft or at surface vessels, you've got to be sure you're firing at an enemy. So you have to study enemy silhouettes and with aircraft, learn their wingspans so as to judge their distance from you by how much of your gun sight they fill. This is one of the most important things you must master here at school. Estimation of range. For instance, when the wings of a Messerschmitt 109 fill so much of your ring sight, the fighter is coming into range. But if this were a twin engine fighter with a bigger wingspan, he would be too far away to shoot at. Estimation of the range of an airplane, its apparent speed, and the right lead to give it are three of the four chief parts of accurate shooting. The fourth is harmonization of the gun with the sight. You sight your target along a straight line. Your bullet fired in the same direction will not fly straight. It will drop below the target. So the gun must be pointed up. Then the bullet will drop into the target. This process can be figured out by arithmetic for a given range. After you do the figuring, you can make a chart and line up the gun barrel with this disc and the sight with this mark. When you know how to do this, you can bore sight a gun and shoot it on the ground range. Point blank range and distant range. Fix targets by day to learn the effect of range, and by night to learn how to use tracer ammunition. Then, moving targets to learn how to estimate lead. Handheld guns and turret guns. Now you begin to look like a machine gunner. This is what you are here for, to fire guns, to kill. Now you're ready for your first flight. You take your life vest and your parachute and your goggles and helmet with earphones. And when you look like this, you climb into an airplane and take off in flights for the aerial target range. On the range, you will fire at a target towed by another aircraft. The target will first go at the same speed as your airplane at different ranges then your airplane will go faster than the target and then slower. You will cross below the target and then above it to test your judgment of lead, range, and speed. But this air firing won't take up all your time. The rest of the day, you can practice turret maintenance and gun installation. 
Back in the classroom for further study, you must learn visual signals needed for communication with blinkers in international Morse code. In a darkened projection room, entertaining trainers are used to improve your shooting at moving aircraft targets shown on a screen. This will give you good practice and a lot of fun finding out how to lead a fighter coming in for an attack. At the end of your course, you will fly in formation to practice gunnery control and gunnery tactics. Two AT-12s, up a green quarter, 1,000 yards. All gunners on target. Attack closing, range 800 yards. Stand by for left turn. This is only make-believe, for practice. But when you have learned it, when you have learned your academic work, when you have scored high enough on ground and air targets, when you have passed your final examination and received your gunner's wings, then it will not be make-believe anymore. Then the success of a mission will depend on you.